So welcome back to This Week in Video Games, and I'm here with Julia Hardy. So welcome, Julia. How's it going? Um, good. Uh, I'd like to be going outside a little bit more if I could, but other than that, totally fine. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the, the lock, what, what week of lockdown are we in now? We're in like week six or seven. I'm not, I can't really remember the concept of time. No, um, it's basically just one long day in my room. <laughs> and I don't I honestly I have no idea what's going on some days I just don't see anybody at all because I'm not well okay so I'm not completely alone uh, me and uh, a neighbor of mine were spending so much time together in the run-up to lockdown that we decided that basically if one of us has it then we both have it so it's kind of best of both worlds my flatmate disappeared off back home to Greece and just sort of left the flat uh, so I've kind of got the flat to myself but then also there is my neighbor who I do kind of see so it's not I'm not horrifically on my own, but I am alone quite a lot. <laughs> <laughs> I think I'm sorry. I, I, I've, you know what? I'm not even bringing up the fact anymore that I'm talking to myself because I just assume it's going to happen. But what I have started noticing that I'm doing is I'm now, when I'm talking to myself, I'm using the term we, which is <laughs> a bit more concerning. Might try and knock that on the head if I can. One good thing about lockdown is um, we've got kind of plenty of time to consume uh, media and uh, I know you've you've sort of re fairly recently launched a new podcast on BBC Sounds. I was wondering if you could um, tell us a bit about that. Oh sure okay so it's called This Game Changed My Life and it's uh, yeah, it's not available on uh, BBC Sounds and all places you can you know, find podcasts blah blah whatever. Um, so basically it's pretty self-explanatory really. We talk to people whose lives have been changed uh, forever uh, by playing a game or being involved in making games or just involved in games in some way. Uh, there's been one particular title that's just altered their life forever. Um, it's a really broad mix of subjects. So, you know, we've got the kind of, you know, classic stories of, you know, esports, uh, people who've like won like a bunch of money and had some drama like in their lives. Um, you know, so people who've like made video games or fled war torn countries or yeah, it really is unbelievably diverse. It's, it's such an odd mix, but that's why I like it. I really liked um I think it was Arsino uh, talking about his story with NASA. That was, oh, terrible. Uh, he, yeah. on his, right, okay, so normally when you interview someone, uh, if they use terminology that you don't understand, you usually ask them to clarify, right? I gave up. He was basically just talking about all these things. That he, he was making things and spacecrafts and thrusters. I don't know. He it was English, clearly, but I had no idea. He was using so much terminology, I had no idea what it was. I was like, this is going to take at least an hour uh, <laughs> if I try and like, get him to... I'll just let him talk. He's just going off on one. I love it. It was great. And uh, uh, Ryan's story as well, like, I thought was... I thought it was really, really moving. That, that that one that one sort of almost had me in tears listening to that one. Yeah, I mean Ryan Hart, everybody who knows anything about fighting games knows Ryan Hart. He is he's the boss, man. He's uh, he's transcended uh, uh, age. I don't know. I mean, it's important to bring that up, I think, because you know, a lot of esports competitors uh, tend to be very, very young. You know, uh, Call of Duty players often talk about the fact that once you get over 21, like just forget it or whatever, you know. But he transcended, he's had a really long, illustrious career over multiple games, which is unusual as well. Um and then there's this story about how when he first got into winning championships, he didn't have a place to live. He was homeless. He was literally living on the streets. And I've known Ryan a really long time. And this was, you know, it's, it's an eye-opening experience. You just, you never truly know what's going on in the background of someone's life or in their story. I mean, we all make huge assumptions uh, about people and where they're from and what kind of life they've had. And I think it's um, it's continually surprising to me that there are, you know, very successful people who have had st still become successful, even with some huge, what you would see as disadvantages. But then, um, you know, fundamentally, he talks about it in the episode, how, you know, without video games, he wouldn't be where he was today. But not only that, he, he, he sort of says he, he doesn't even think he would be alive because video games are the thing that got him through that incredibly difficult time in his life. And it went on for a number of years. It wasn't just a short period of time he was homeless. You know, it was quite a number a number of years. Um, yeah, so it's just it's just mind-blowing. And he's a great guy anyway. He's He's got his really good perspective uh, on kind of how everything happened and how it all sort of worked out. But, yeah, it was an amazing story. So talking, um, talking about kind of video games getting you through difficult 
moments. Because I, I, I still find when I say to people that I play video games, they, they still sort of look down their nose at me a little bit and as if I should be sort of reading books or, you know, going to the opera or, you know, whatever. Yeah. Um, but this, you know, obviously the, the, the times that we're living in is... Um, you know, you kind of need something like video games to get you through. We were talking about sort of video games supporting Ryan, getting him through his mm. tough time. Yeah. I think we're all we're all in a bit of need of that at the moment. Um, agreed. And I also think that um, I think this is going to be quite a, a pivotal moment for gaming in a lot of sense, because whilst I think people would have come into uh, lockdown with that potentially that perspective on gaming, uh, I think a lot of people are going to realise how important gaming is and what it can bring uh, into their lives after there's only so much TV you can watch before you're like, tear out my eyeballs. I can't stand. I just don't want to do this anymore. You know, whereas with video games, like we, like we know, I mean, lockdown, schmockdown, whatever. Right. I could easily, like if they brought out cyberpunk 2077 right now, I would literally, I wouldn't even know that lockdown had happened. Yeah. I would have just been indoors playing it anyway, you know, because it's engaging and it's exciting. Uh, and I think a lot of people are going to come out of the other side of lockdown realizing that. So I think it's going to, I think there's going to be a shift, a cultural shift in, um, in how people look at it and certainly in how it's been reported as well. I, I noticed someone put a couple of uh, articles side to side, I think from, I don't know, one of the, the, the red top papers, you know, gaming causes violence or something, it was something along those lines. It was a negative article yeah. about video games. And then next to it now, it's like, Oh, what games, you know, can uh, prove to like lift your spirits or whatever. So people's, you know, even the papers are starting to shift their um, shift their perspective on that, which is good. About time. I don't know if anyone has asked you this question before, but in sort of relation to your your podcast, mm-hmm. I mean, have you got a game that changed your life? Um, not in the same way. In terms of like the interviews we've got, I mean, we're talking about people who have been through some really extreme situations uh, and periods in their life and, and it's a singular game that has totally shifted it i've obviously like everyone i've had games uh, through the course of my growing up who that have, that have changed my perspective or got me into games i think probably most recently and you were just touching upon this here about how games can really save you and help you help get you uh, through periods in your life um so like my, my family situation has been a little bit uh messy like my dad has terminal cats and my mum has alzheimer's there's a whole lot bunch of stuff going on right um and one of the things that i noticed um after my dad getting diagnosed was i felt i really struggled to um to play video games and it it became very difficult because obviously it's my job and it's my passion and i think some i think sometimes when you're very sad it will naturally take away the thing that brings you joy and I really struggled with games. Like I'd have to f- almost force myself to sit down and play them. And, you know, this is my job. It's supposed to be my passion. And I just sort of kind of fought through that because I was like, I will find that again, but I just don't feel it now. But it just, it just went on for a really long time. It was it, honest. I'm not even kidding. It was a genuine life struggle. Um, and then it was um, beginning of last year when things really kicked off with my mum. My dad got really sick. His cats came back. Uh, they were going to put my mum in a home. There was like, all of this stuff going on, like I can't even, it would take the entire podcast to explain the the, the, the complete colossal, like, <laughs> you know, when it's like this happens and then that happens and then it's like a ludicrous drama of events happened. And I was experiencing so much stress, uh, like like the likes of which I've never experienced before in my life for, for like a sustained period, like weeks on weeks. I had like stomach pains and cramps. I was so stressed all the time, put it that way. And it was when I... Um, it's when I um, ended up uh, starting to play God of War and I was like, and I was on a BAFTA jury and I was playing it for the jury. I was sort of going through the same thing where I felt like, oh, it's going to be a real struggle for me to get through this game because the joy has gone. And I, and I, you know, because of all this stuff that was happening in my life and it's something funny happened. Something just clicked with that particular game where the knot in my stomach disappeared. And it was the first time, honestly, in weeks, I didn't feel like almost like, like this, I've never experienced stress where I've had a stomach pain the constantly the whole time. Um, and it went away and I started playing the game and I played it more and I wanted to play it and it was easy to play it. And it was, I was enjoying it and it wasn't, it was, it was such an odd, it was a really powerful experience for me because I'd struggled for so long to really get into games again. I know this sounds crazy. This is my job, you know, after playing that game, uh, it just, it was so... <laughs> It basically, it gave me my love back for gaming. 
it brought it back in this massive like waterfall like cascade of emotion of the how I used to feel about games before all of this stuff happened and kind of stripped me of the kind of joy in my life and I, and I can talk about it now because I'm through it and I and through this whole period I'd never really talk to anyone about it because it sounds crazy like I would cry when I talk about it because I couldn't play games and I couldn't find that love for games you know, because it's, it's my life, it's my job, and I knew it was my passion, but, yeah, to sort of be in that situation was odd. And I don't think anyone who didn't know games could fully understand how upsetting it is to not be able to do the thing that you love the most and love it. It's, it's weird. Anyway, so in answer to your question, what that I've explained within a 40-minute uh, soliloquy, was, <laughs> was God of War, really just... God of War um, reignited my love and passion for games when life had basically stripped it away from me. If, I mean, I think the, probably the only person I really spoke to a little bit about it was um, Jane Douglas, who's like a... Like, she's one of my best friends. Um, uh, you know, she does um, outside Xbox, like the YouTube channel, and, and used to do stuff for um, uh, Xbox and things like that. Um, and I would sometimes, like message her because I'd like really try to get in games or I'd get, or I'd get frustrated. I actually one time had to get her to help me in a game. Like I gave her my save profile because I just couldn't, I couldn't get past this point in this game. And I just didn't have, um, I didn't have the patience and the drive to do it. I just couldn't because I just didn't have anything left in me. <laughs> Bless her. She like downloads my game safe and all it was was just like some weird platformy jump in Destiny that I just could not get my head around and it was so frustrating. And she like did it. She was like, to be fair, it was really difficult, but like I did do it. And I was like, oh my god, I've I've like never in my life asked someone to help me with a game like that. Oh, you could tell I was going through some stressful emotional times. The, the jumping puzzles in Destiny can be pretty hardcore. <laughs> I'm just I'm just not a platformer. I, there's something about jumping that my brain does not like. Like, it hates it. Like, even in, like, really old-school platforms, I'm like, it's stupid. This jump is stupid. I don't know. It brings out the four-year-old, like, aggressive toddler in me. I don't know what it is. I mean, how can how can people, if if, if they haven't heard of the... Uh, so this game changed my life. Um, how, how can they uh, get hold of it? So if you go to BBC Sounds, which is, um, it's not region uh, locked in anyway. So actually, if you're listening to this anywhere in the world, you can listen to the podcast on there and just literally just type in this game changed my life. And there'll be this really weird picture of me and Aoife uh, pop up uh, looking like uh, GTA characters. That's the one. That so, illustration's awesome. Yeah, it's great. It's great. Um, we went through like a, a few different designs of that. But um, yeah, Aoife, I complain because I think I look too like, Mwah! and Aoife complains because she thinks she looks too serious. And it looks like she's judging my, I don't know. It's funny. It's a funny juxtaposition of faces. I wanted to move um, slightly away from your, your new podcast and on to Game to Train, if that is okay. Oh, yeah, sure, sure. And uh, so you've been... You've been doing um, uh, weekday training sessions uh, called Game to Train. You're live streaming. I was wondering if you could tell us a little bit more about that. I have had the idea for Game to Train since the inception of Xbox One, right? In, in, in Not in its fullest form of what it is now, but this has been in the back of my mind as something I wanted to do since the launch of Xbox One. So I'm a very slow starter. I didn't do anything for a really long period of time, but... Um, Basically, uh, I got to the point where I was like, I keep thinking about this and I've had this book and I kept writing things down. And it's you, know, you sort of think like life is going to make something happen, but actually it never does. You honestly just have to carve out time in your diary. And I was like, well, I'm gonna, either just going to stop thinking about this or I'm going to do it because it's annoying. So at about, um, I think it was like summer last year, maybe end of summer last year, I was like, right, okay, shut up, Julia. You're either going to do it or you're not. So I basically set aside... Um, an hour in the morning every day. So I just do an hour. Whatever I do in an hour is fine, but it's just do an hour every day. Uh, and basically, the concept um, is a, uh, a workout program that's designed for gamers. And that sounds really stupid, like, oh, why are gamers like really different? Do they like have different knees? Which was what someone sort of said to me. And I was like, no, it's not... <laughs> It's basically that the concept is that all of the routines are designed around different game character types. Because fundamentally, each of the different types of characters you get in different games uh, illustrates different type of fitness and different type of workout programs. So you have someone like an adventurer, like a Nathan Drake or a Lara Croft, that's kind of jack of all trades. You know, there's a little bit of plyometrics, a little bit of jumping in there. There's a little bit of fighting, but like nothing too specific. And it's kind of sort of general kind of fitness. And then you have like an assassin character, which is 
not about punching someone in the face. It's about being very quick, being very light on your feet, being very silent. So it's all kind of speed and agility and like elements of parkour and things like that. And then you have super soldier, which is kind of the precursor to like lifting heavy weights at the gym. So it's more about kind of like bulking up and about kind of tempo and time under tension. And anyway, like this. Or, or like even like the knight character, which is just pure endurance. You've got a kind of, you're wearing, wearing a really heavy lot of armor uh, and you just got to keep going. See that field? You just got to march through it. I'm sorry, you can't just stop or whatever. You just got to keep going. Um, so I've, I picked these like four characters that I thought were the most kind of important, those four like, I just discussed. And I designed uh, not only sort of how the how the structure of the workout would sort of be relevant to the character, but also the moves. So I basically designed bespoke moves for all of the characters which was hands down one of the funnest things ever because basically i would watch playthroughs of games and be like "Ooh, what kind of move could i do with that Ooh, i could do a bit like this i'm going to call it something funny uh <laughs> it's basically that so um i have all these different characters um each of the workouts is designed for everybody so uh the way that the workouts are put together is like uh there's uh, 10 minutes each with 60 seconds uh, for each of the moves so there's only 10 moves in each workout um so if you just wanted to do 10 minutes you could do 10 minutes but then there's like a leveling system within it so depending on how long uh, and how long you can do the moves you have a different level so it basically means that everybody no matter what your fitness can work out at the same time uh, and I'm very clear about the fact that it doesn't really matter what level you're at. It's about what level you improve to. So you could start at like a level one and go to a level two and that's great. Or you could start a level three and go to a level four. And that's also great. If you see what I mean. Um, I just wanted to make it fun because all the fitness stuff I've seen has always been a bit like if you log into any app, it's always like, what would you like to do? Would you like to a lose weight, B build muscle, C maintain. And you're like, I don't do any of those things. I want to I wanna be freaking Nathan Drake. Where's the button for that? Like, you know, I don't want to just, these things are boring. Don't just tell me to do 30 seconds of burpees. Why am I doing them? Why am I doing the burpees? How is this going to possibly help me in life? So the idea is, is to make you as like the video game characters as possible, basically. So not only in the fitness and the moves and how, like it's, they, they call it functional fitness. I mean, all fitness is functional, but it's more about showing how this would actually benefit you in life. So in terms of branding the moves and how we do them, and sometimes they're kind of compounded together, like a couple of things together, um, it shows you how this is actually going to help you and make you more like that character in real life. And then the next level of this is like, I have weird little side quests where I make people go off on adventures as well, because it's all about being like the video game character. Um, but yeah, so I've been doing this and then um, obviously lockdown happened and uh, I didn't really anticipate to do a whole bunch of live classes. It was not really, it's not really what I imagined I'd be doing. Um, I thought I was just gonna make an Instagram page with cool stuff on it. But I was like, screw it, let's just do some live classes. So I started them and at the end of this week, it will be six weeks I've been doing live classes at like 8 a.m. in the morning, um, Monday to Friday. And it's been great. And it's been great to test it out. It's been great to get all this kind of live feedback from people, like things they hated, things they loved, uh, what characters they liked. Um, I did like a little two week adventurer, like whole routine together so people could like test it out over a period of time. And um, yeah, I just streamed it on uh, Instagram and um, on YouTube and now on uh, Twitch. And I've kind of saved all of the VODs on um, onto YouTube because let's be honest, not everyone wants to get up at 8am and work out with uh, a psychotic woman in a crop top. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, some people do, but not everybody. That sounds awesome. So, how can how can um, people uh, get involved if they if they want to? Okay, so um, if you you can follow me on YouTube, which is just uh, youtube.com, obviously uh, forward slash it's Julia Hardy. So, like I T S Julia Hardy. Um, that's actually the same for all of my socials. So. Um, you can uh, go and follow me on Twitter and I'll post stuff on there. Uh, game to Train itself has its own Instagram. It's just at Game to Train uh, and the same for Twitter. So um, I'll be updating that with kind of like when things are happening and like what's kind of going up. I'm currently in the process of making the entire move deck, which is an oh, my God. I mean, I know like not a lot is going on, but geez, it's been long winded. So it means that I've been filming all of the moves for all of the characters. And then I basically have to kind of design them, trim them, cut them uh, and then put their like names on them so that I can start creating like um, workout decks that I can then put up on Instagram. It's been very long. It's nice. just been a really long period of time. And, and I did shoot some like way back when, but I was like, I don't like the quality. I'm such a snob. So I want to reshoot all these. And um, I did it. I did it a couple of weeks ago. And just for fun, I like put on my watch my uh, to like just see 
it was like three hours of shooting one day and that was only that was only like a character and a half or something um but because i was repeating the moves and making sure that they were correct and that i liked the way that it was shot i think i burned like 800 892 calories um wow and that was not, not including the workout in, in the morning. That was, I think it was also because I was exhausted because I'd done the class in the morning and then <laughs> was doing all of this other hit stuff for three hours. Don't recommend. Just stick 30 hours. Honestly, the whole point of hit is that it's quick. You don't do three hours of hit. It's insane. I basically fell asleep the entire weekend. I was like, <laughs> my entire body had just given up. Yeah. Because like the point of hit is, you know, you get in, you get out. Um, Actually, one of them, um, one of uh, the girls who's been doing it, Mel, she uh, she's amazing. She um, she's basically upgraded from a level two to um, a level four. And a level four is where you do like the whole minute for all of the moves for all of the workout. And that's insane. That's great. I struggle with that. Um, so, yeah, it's been um, it's been amazing to kind of see that happen. And people kind of really get into the spirit of it and imagine themselves as the characters. It's been um, I'm, I'm, so, I'm so glad I did it. It was such an accident thing to do and then it's just been one of the best things that's come out of it so far i think oh fantastic and it's you can tell uh, i don't talk to people during the day i'm so excited <laughs> to be talking to someone i'm like i can talk to someone i'm not just sitting alone in my flat i know exactly what i mean i, I i'm i'm talking to people all day on zoom through little windows and i, I sort of feel like uh the uh i think that no, i'm just it... jealous i don't have that many zoom calls i just i talk to myself clearly it's i'm gonna be so weird by the time they come out they're gonna <laughs> break down the door i'm gonna have like a beard there's gonna be like a weird fort made out of like sofa cushions with like old yogurt pots in it or something i don't know at least you'll be in good shape so this is true i am working out probably more than i would normally do <laughs> So t talking of um, working out, I mean, have you have you had any experience with like fitness video games? So, yes and no. I think in the same way, sort of everybody kind of has. They were always a bit. I never really got into Wii Fit. It wasn't really my thing. I didn't want to be told that I was too old. Shut up. Um, I'm kind of I, I tell you what one that actually I did recently that I thought was like one of the best workouts and actually was unbelievable fun and they really really smashed it was um beat saber mm. i think it's um i think it's the longest i've ever done vr normally you know with vr you have to like stop every like level or so and kind of just take it off and like have a sit down and then go yeah. back into it and you're kind of really aware of the time you're spending in the game that oh my god i like i think i played for like 45 minutes straight i like took the thing off like the whole thing was all that like, wet inside i had to like get a towel i was like <laughs> this is so unbelievable this is the perfect fitness game because also it's not oh hey we're making a fitness game uh which always is a bit rubbish it's like you know when they make video games that like teach you things and you're like yeah stop trying to make me learn i know what you're doing um, <laughs> whereas like um, you know with beat saber it's just great it's just fun um, and honestly, yeah, it's just a great old workout that um, it's, it's like the, it's basically the perfect VR game. It's perfect. It's so good. I'm quite, quite new to VR myself. Like when lockdown started, I was kind of like, I mean, ring mm. about Half-Life Alex. Oh, yeah. And um, I was like, oh, you know, if I'm going to be inside for all this time, I may yeah. as well yeah. you know, spank some money on um, a VR unit. Mm -hmm. And uh yeah, I haven't got Beat Saber yet, though, so I'll, I'll check oh, it out. Oh, man, seriously, it's so good. And also, like, VR can, especially when it's, like, narrative, can be quite intense. And um, um, what, did I, what was I playing? Uh, Blood and Truth. I really liked it. I thought it was quite fun. Uh, that's, like, PSVR. Um, I think there's something about, yeah, it's, it's London Studio. There's something about, like, being interrogated where someone is acting right in front of your face. Yeah. And, like, it, it still had a few little problems with it being a little bit glitchy at points and it wasn't the smoothest ride. But, oh, my goodness, when they start nailing that down, like, it's weird. It's so weird when they're coming, like, right up to you in your face uh, and, and you know, saying stuff to you and you're like, oh, my God, I'm going to look up his nose. Um, it's crazy. It's, 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 it's unbelievable. But... I mean, I remember, um, actually, it was one year um, at E3, um, London Studio had done the demo, which was taken, actually, from part of that game, which was um, this car chase where um, you're, like, in this van and uh, you're a passenger and, basically, people come up and they're trying to shoot you and you have this, like, uh, SMG and you're basically just pointing and shooting at them and you're reloading by kind of loading the clip in the bottom. And it's a very simple premise. If you say, say it out loud, you're in a car, you're being chased by some stuff and you shoot at it, and you're like, that sounds super boring like that's like every other 
crap game, whatever. But it was the first time kind of doing it in VR and they made the kind of reload function really great and, and being able to point and shoot someone where they are, like as you would with like a gun. Uh, it, it's the power fantasy that like, we signed up for. That's what I wanted to do is to feel like a badass. I don't want to use a controller and feel stupid. I know I'm stupid and that I'd suck at this in real life. I want to be really good. That's the point. And um, yeah, I just remember sort of playing that level and being like, wow, okay, this makes, this has completely sold me on VR. Like if they can get this right where it just feels easy and it's actually intuitive, actual real intuitive controls, then brilliant. I'm so in for it because the controller is, let's be honest, terrible it's a terrible way to interact with a machine why are those buttons there i mean we know that it's crouched because we've pressed that button a million times before but to anyone else if you're having to explain it it's not great and like i'm not pleased i'm not i'm not like poo-pooing like controllers because i do love them and but unfortunately we're kind of stuck in this way of interacting that's just it's just it doesn't make any sense it doesn't make any sense at all one of, one of the things I was really impressed with recently was, uh, um, and kind of tying back to fitness, oh, yeah. was on the Nintendo Switch. Um, yeah. I've, I managed to somehow bag myself a version of Ring Fit Adventure. Oh, yeah. Uh, and, uh, yeah, it's really cool. So you do like a, you do a little workout session, and then you can put your thumb over the infrared camera, and it will read your pulse. Oh, nice. Is that, but how accurate is that? I don't know. I haven't got anything to compare I mean, it's, it to. It's not, yeah. <laughs> it might just all be. You fake. need to like wear a watch at the same time. They were actually like watches. To be honest with you, are not that um, and not that accurate. I mean, some are and some aren't. I think the 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 ones that you think will be accurate are accurate, and the ones that you think that aren't going to be accurate aren't. If you if you get me. Um, yeah. But, you know, to be honest with you, for me, it's more just about I like to catalogue my workouts so that I know that I've got them and I've got like a history of them. Um, But also it does give you like a rough idea, although there is something very frustrating if you're doing really high intensity workouts and it thinks that you're like 80 BPM and you're like dying on the floor. You're like, shut up, watch. You don't know what I've been through. You're shit. Why would you just? Yeah, that can be frustrating. Um, But yeah, it's, it's more about just getting like a rough, rough idea of what's kind of going on. I mean. Anyone who's getting into fitness, there's a really simple sort of rule of thumb in terms of working out what your heart rate is doing and, and how your body is doing. Um, and it's it's the talking test. So um, if you're kind of a, there's a sort of thing where like you can kind of if you can uh, say you're like jogging and you can hold a conversation, you're obviously at a much lower sort of uh, BPM. And then the more you're sort of like pe- perhaps you can't say a full sentence uh, without having to sort of take a breath. And then there's the other one where you just can't talk. Mm. And those are kind of the three stages that you look at anyway in terms of like what your body is doing. So it's it's pretty straightforward. I mean, you sort of know what's happening. That's cool. Or you should do. <laughs> <laughs> like if you're like, <laughs> oh, there's well, probably about 90 BPM. No, it's not. No, it's not. I, I definitely recommend um, checking out your workout routines. Uh, for everyone out there who's interested in sort of keeping fit whilst in in lockdown. Um, and uh, so have you, got any, have you got any games that are kind of helping you through uh, lockdown? I, I sort of hate that phrase, lockdown, but I, I keep using it. <laughs> yeah, no, 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 it's fine. Um, <clears throat> so what am I doing? The weekends in the morning, I'm just doing a little bit of Animal Crossing, but I'm not really heavily getting into it. Uh, in the, like, I'm not like dedicating hours and hours. I tend to just do it for like a couple of hours in the morning, and then I'm like, okay, I'm done. Um, uh, and I don't know. I don't know if I really want to get that deep into the whole turnip thing. I just, oof, I mm. don't know. I'm, I'm not very good with money. I'll probably make some terrible decision and lose it all somehow. Uh, like life. Uh, so I'm also playing um, Breath of the Wild. That's like my, that's like my weekend game when I just want to play something that just makes me really happy and really chill and lovely. And then I'm uh, working through Final Fantasy VII remake as well, and that's also oh. making me really happy. But that's like my that's like my weekday game. And then I play yeah. Zelda as like a treat on the weekend. I'm trying to. Yeah. I'm also trying to do the same with um, Netflix. So there's a couple of series that I was trying to get through i was trying not to binge on so that i can have something to look forward to like special on the weekend so formula one uh, drive to survive is incredible um but i'm being really good about just watching one episode and then stopping time doesn't matter anymore so time <laughs> doesn't exist anymore we have no effect on the space time continuum nothing we do will have any consequence consequences in the future or the past i hadn't watched the mandalorian so i actually dug that out and 
I loved it. It was so good. And I did the same thing where I was like, it's what I watch on a Sunday morning. I watch my one episode. Actually, to be fair, I watched two. I couldn't I couldn't restrain myself with just one. So I'd watch like two on the weekends. And it was, yeah, it was just the kind of wholesome Star Wars-y thing I really, really needed, you know? It's like a it's like a kind of cowboy story, right? Yeah, it's it's so good. And I hate cowboy stories. Mm. Like I like I really hate them. Um and e- it even just... city slickers. <laughs> I didn't get on with City Slickers. I, mean, I think I've watched it, but I just there's something about the whole cowboy story that I just I don't yeah. care. Like I yeah. just don't care. There's I don't think there's anything cool about it. There's nothing that kind of attracts me to it. You know, when you're like a badass space adventurer cowboy, it's cool because it's you're a space adventurer cowboy. Yeah. That's fine. But the whole kind of Wild West era that I don't know, it just doesn't speak to me in that way. And I wish it did. I really wish it did because there's a whole lot of stuff out there that's really cool that I would love to like. But, uh, yeah, I just can't. I just don't think it's cool. Did did you play through Red Dead Redemption 2? Yeah, but I struggled with it. I mean, you know, there was other stuff going on that made it also difficult for that as I did before. But but also I found it really hard because I just don't like cowboys. I just don't like them. I really want to like them. And I really, really wanted to get, like, super into it. But I was like, I just... I don't know what it is. And, you know, I feel like it's something that I should like. You know, they're out in this kind of place. You know, you're like sleeping under the stars. You're like your your own law, your own whatever. You can take jobs and da-da. Why don't I like this? I like this in every other version of it. Why don't I like it in this one? I don't know what it is. It's weird. Are there um, are there any games you're looking forward to in the rest of 2020? I mean, it's just going to be The Last of Us 2, although I'm going to cry a lot. And I mean, wait, Cyberpunk, it's not even going to be, is it going to be this year? It is going to be this year, isn't it? Yes. I hope so, yeah. I yeah. think it's I mean, September or something. Well, that's what I thought. But then I thought, like, that doesn't, I don't feel like it's going to happen. I don't know why. I'm just like, I know I read that it was September, but I feel like, anyway, I'm going to be positive. That, Cyberpunk, 100%. And it's, it's you know, CD Projekt Red, I'm obsessed with The Witcher like obsessed with it it's my all-time favorite game of all time ever like the the wild hunt sometimes i just turn it on and just walk around if i just need to calm myself (laughs) i don't know why there's something i mean really you know the witcher is a bit like a cowboy it's almost exactly the same but it's just like he's in a fantasy environment you know what i mean wandering around sleeping under the stars a man and law unto himself blah 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 it's just less I'm, I'm gonna I'm gonna admit something. I haven't played The Witcher Three. Jesus Christ, man! <laughs> How did you not? Did you play any of the others? No, I, I for some reason it passed me by. Like okay, um, you, can, you can look, you can still go back to it, even though it's older. Yeah. Honestly, it is. It's the epitome of a perfect RPG, right? Yeah. You know when you play Skyrim and all that sort of jazz and. You know, you're kind of going around and everything you can you can feel when it's a fetch quest. You can yeah. feel the, the the game systems. You can kind of see them working. Uh, and then you sort of turn up and there's like a bunch of text and you're like, read it, la, 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 whatever. Um, the Witcher has this amazing way of like the world is so incredibly populated. So let me just um, hold this up to Red Dead, right? In Red Dead, there's no, in two, there's no point getting off your horse. There's none. Like, yeah, yeah. okay, the world's big, but there's nothing in it. With the Witcher, I would get off my horse all the time. I'd be like, look at that weird tree. I'm going to go over there. What's over there? Oh, there's like a dead body under the tree. Oh, there's a key or there's like a note and it links to like this other cave thing and there's a cave over there and then there's this other thing and then there's a tower up here. Bet there's something good up there. So I just wandered around on foot because there was just so much stuff to look at and see and the world was just so fully populated. And then sometimes you'd find something in it or there'd be this really innocuous stupid fetch quest not that you would ever really realize that it was a fetch quest because it's kind of dressed up in story in like a really nice way um and then suddenly the the story would just it'd be something stupid and then it turned into this whole other storyline that you just never would have thought to kind of follow it through even though it seemed like a really like bullshit quest basically and then there's this whole other story that's just kind of come out of it and it, it was just surprising all the time and even though I, I never felt like I could see the game working. 
you know it never felt like that it just felt like i was fully in this world with all of these people it just felt so fleshed out and so real and so exciting and there was just something always going on and there was always something to see and always something to explore and i wanted to go to those places whereas red dead it was just like okay let's go to this place now and then this bit is here da, da, da. And i'll go off and do this thing da, da. but like anytime i got off my horse i was like why this is stupid why have i got off my horse i'm just gonna walk around in nothing I'm going to admit to something else as well that I it's actually sitting on my shelf. Honestly, this is The Witcher 3 is the most if you haven't played it is the most perfect game for lockdown because you'll start off you'll be like oh god this seems a bit complicated and then suddenly it clicks and it is just incredible like the voice acting is amazing Doug Cockle is brilliant I love him to bits he's an amazing voice actor he's a guy who plays, plays the witcher uh, everyone else within it like it just make it so real you love him he's such a great character he's just so morose and sort of moody and they sort of pull it out and they have fun with it and they turn it on its head and there's dark moments there's moments you have to make big decisions it's got everything you could possibly want and honestly you'll suddenly realize that lockdown ended like three weeks ago and you didn't even know because you're just so in it. Now is now is the time. I think, I think you should really play it. It's, it's one of those games that I hate being this person. It's one of those games that as a gamer, you really should have experienced and played to some degree. Yeah, just I know. Because, just because it is so good. And even now I'm still like, it's like my favorite game. And years later, it was like, it was utterly perfect. And not just because, you know, sometimes you just play a game at a time in your life and it has that nostalgia attached to it. But there are, you know, a few things that could be better about it. It's not that. It's just a a really fantastic, well-rounded, incredible game. And that's why I'm so excited about Cyberpunk. Because if it's got, like, even 50% of what they accomplished with The Witcher, it's going to be spectacular. Like, and I trust them implicitly. I trust them implicitly to make it good because they are so passionate about it and so passionate about making the game good. And they know the sort of weight that they have on their shoulders. But they don't strike me as people that are going to buckle under that pressure. I mean, now would be the perfect... Because I think it was originally slated for the middle of April. Yeah, it was, it was. And then... Um, but then, you know, I don't I don't want them to release it if it's not going to be perfect. There's yeah, no point, true. you know. Like, anyone who keeps moaning about it, I would rather they took their time, didn't destroy their staff, and just got it done properly and released it when it was ready. You know? The, the whole... Um... Because the, the fallout of the Naughty Dog uh, leaks this week as well, with I think uh, I've avoided it. I don't yeah. know anything. Uh, me neither. I'm, I'm sort of I've set loads of sort of keywords on Twitter to to avoid avoid that sort of stuff. But it's uh, it's uh, I think that's actually got a release date now. I think it's um, is yeah, it they June? did a countdown. Yeah, yeah, June, June. They did a countdown of like they were like it's a hundred and something days or whatever. Anyway, yeah, I I, I don't really pay attention because I think like when it's definitely set then I'm going to really get excited. I'm not going to put my hopes on to a particular time until I know it's definitely happening, like in the run-up. And there's no point getting excited now because, you know, they might push it back or whatever. I don't think they will now. But, um, you know, when you're excited about a game, I don't let myself get excited until it's like the final furlong. That is the worst thing, like waiting waiting for something to come out. I, I had that with um, Final Fantasy recently where I was really, really, really... Um, wanted to play it on release date i ordered it i had a physical copy coming and no, that was uh, an error straight away. i know i know <laughs> no, no no just never never order physical copies yeah you always get screwed just don't do it and also can i just say just don't pre-order because yeah. this is the problem they end up making terrible decisions based on the fact that they've got these pre-orders and stuff like that i think you're better off just get yourself a digital copy on release wait till you hear the reviews and stuff like that as well just because otherwise people tend to get a bit shafted with uh, the pre-order stuff well julia I've, I've taken up loads of your time today i really i really appreciate um you sorry taking... nothing hasn't ca- it's cancelled it's fine like <laughs> <laughs> well I, I yeah i really appreciate you taking the time to to talk to us on this week in video games and uh, definitely recommend everyone go out there and uh, download this game changed my life um and check out game to train um, I, I don't know if you have any social media stuff you want to give a shout out before we, um, before we um, finish. Yeah, no, just um, all of my social media is basically all the same. So it's I T S Julia Hardy. So like it's Julia Hardy. That's the same like on all platforms. That's my YouTube, my my Twitter, my Instagram, everything. And then Game to Train is just the same. It's just at Game to Train. Um, like I say, uh, uh, download the podcast on BBC Sounds, um, and then you know go leave reviews, subscribe, all that jazz, you know stuff. 
Julia, it's been an absolute pleasure, and no I hope lock, lockdown uh, ends soon and we can sort of get back to some kind of normality. But, yeah, it's been an absolute pleasure. Thank you very much. No problem at all. All right, cheers, Dom.